Greetings, citizens, and welcome to the button bindings segment of my dual joystick setup guide. This guide assumes that you are using two Thrustmaster T16000M joysticks, as I recommend, possibly the best setup you can get for Star Citizen, and uh, also very affordable, under $100 for the pair of them, if you live in the U.S., and uh, quite affordable elsewhere as well. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at my proposed button bindings here. Now, obviously, you can customize your own setup, but uh, there are a couple things to keep in mind. We're using a shift key, meaning that uh, one of the buttons on one of the joysticks is going to have a shift function where it essentially holds down either a shift, control, or alt key, which changes the function of other buttons that you program to have a shift function. So you can have one button that when you push that button, it fires weapon group one. But if you hold down whatever the shift button is, now that button and other buttons have a different function. So you can have that same button be to fire a missile, say, uh, or to even eject or something along those lines. Let's go ahead and take a look at my proposed button bindings. This is the setup that I came up with that I use myself when I use dual T16000M joysticks. The main reason for the Weapon Group 1 and Weapon Group 2 being on the two different triggers is largely immersion. It just feels really, really cool when you line up on a target and everything is uh, now bearing down on that target. You just squeeze both triggers and fire everything you've got at them. Um, but it's also very intuitive, and intuitive is generally a good thing. It is better to not have any of your triggers on the right-hand joystick, so you might want to consider moving things around and taking that weapon group 2 off of the right joystick in favor of having it on the left-hand stick somewhere. But moving triggers over to the left hand takes, uh, takes some commitment to doing whatever it's going to take to get the absolute best possible accuracy out of your setup and out of yourself because it's all very unusual and for me not very immersive to move triggers over to the left hand and not have your traditional joystick trigger. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go over these. Now, we were talking about the shift button. I am setting the shift button here as the back button on the left-hand joystick. So anytime that you hold down that button, the bottom rear button on the left-hand joystick, any of the buttons that you see have a function here in the red square, you're going to get that function instead of the regular function. Okay? So Sometimes we're going to be wanting to do these things while we're shooting our guns. And I went and I did a test, and at least at the time of this recording, Star Citizen, if you are holding down your shift button, but there's no shift function bound to a button, like our weapon group 1 here and weapon group 2 here, that function will still work. It works both with and without the shift function, the shift button held down. So what this means is that if you are holding down your triggers and hammering into a bad guy and you want to do something that does require the shift button, it will not stop your guns from shooting while you do it. Now a couple other considerations, guys, for your shift button in case you want to come up with your own uh, custom setups is that you basically need to be very careful when you are coming up with a key map for a shift function. You don't want any of the functions that you put in as a shift function to be something that you will be holding down rather than just tapping briefly so that you're not going to be trying to do other things while the shift button is being applied. And you don't want it to be anything that you are likely to want to use while you are simultaneously doing something else. Now, we do have the exception that we mentioned here. I'm going to assume that you might want to do any of these things while you're shooting. That's why we're not binding a shift function to the main gun triggers. Now, you could, if you want to, to take advantage of more button placement here, you could assign functions to your triggers. You could assign shift functions there. Just keep in mind that that means that anything else that's in a red square, if you try to do that while you're shooting, you're going to get that shift function instead of your gun if you are squeezing your trigger while you're trying to execute um, some other shift function. So just be careful about that. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at, at setting some things up here. You see the two countermeasures here. I have countermeasure twice. One of them is uh, the standard function and one is a shift function. The shifted function is actually going to be change countermeasure. And what this means, whatever your default countermeasure is that you have set initially um, will fire if you hit that button. 
If you want to fire the other type of countermeasure, say your default is flare and you want to fire a chaff, you will hold the shift button, tap the countermeasure switch, release the shift button, and hit the countermeasure switch again, and you'll fire off one of the second type of countermeasure. If you want to switch back to the initial one, you would again hit the shift button and tap the countermeasure switch to switch back to the other countermeasure type. One more trick for you guys here for setting up your countermeasures. If you are willing to just fire, uh, like I do, fire both flares and chaff anytime that you have incoming missiles. Right now, managing your ammo for countermeasures doesn't really seem to be an issue. We seem to have plenty of ammo, so at this time I'm not really concerned about conserving them. Uh, so I don't feel the need to worry about what kind of countermeasure is currently selected versus what kind of missiles are currently incoming. I do look and see what kind of missiles are incoming so I know if it's a, a cross-section seeking missile, do some manual evasion on those. But I don't bother looking to see what my currently selected countermeasure type is. I just fire both type countermeasures. And there's a really, really easy way for you guys to do this. So I'm going to go into that here real quick. Just go into your, your key bindings menu for your joystick, and here in the flight defensive category, you will see launch countermeasure and cycle countermeasure ammo. So what you can do, instead of setting a button to cycle your countermeasure ammo, by the way, right now Star Citizen does not allow you to bind a button to be chaff and another button to be flares. So what you guys can do is if you set the same button to be launch countermeasure, and to be the cycle countermeasure ammo, as you see I did here, so just go ahead and double click on launch countermeasure and hit that button, then double click on cycle countermeasure ammo, hit the same button again, they're now both set to the same. And I'll show you what happens here. If you watch the countermeasure ammo is right here. Now right now the chaff is what is selected, and if I hit that button, you will see it fires off the chaff, and switched over to flares. So the next time you hit that button, you get flares. Now when I hit it that time, it fired off the flares and it switched back to chaff. So if you just hit that button twice real quick, you fire off both. So that's a nice little trick so that you can use just one button for your chaff and countermeasures. If conserving your chaff and flare ammunition becomes a major issue later on, to where you don't want to be wasting any that way, then, then you might need to dedicate a separate button later on. But for the time being, I think that that is a perfectly good solution. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. All right, so that's pretty much it for there. We're going to go ahead and take a look in-game and uh, walk through setting up these bindings. To set up these bindings, you're going to go ahead and hit Options in-game and go over to Key Bindings. Hit Advanced Controls Customization in the bottom right corner here, and then hit the right arrow twice to move over to Joystick slash HOTAS. Now, I do very strongly encourage you guys to blank out the entire profile. So, if you go through and you just expand out all of the different categories, we want to make all of these blank except for your axes that you set up before. Okay, So once you have those blanked out, and the reason you do this is if you don't blank it out, there may be a default key binding that is using the same button that you bound to something else. So if say the default key binding for a particular button is eject and you go bind weapon group 1 to that um, and don't go through your entire profile and, and remove anything that you don't intend, uh, then the default key binding will still work. So every time you shoot your guns, you'll eject and you won't know why. Um, so it's a very good idea to just go ahead and start with a clean slate. I always, always start with a clean slate when I'm doing custom key maps for joysticks. So we're going to go ahead and go through our key map here. One more thing I guess I should clarify in advance instead of waiting until later. If you have any of these functions, there's going to be some functions that are going to say double tap. And what that means is that's kind of like a, uh, the shift function. It means that uh, you can use that button for something else if you only single tap it. And if you double tap it, it will switch. This is an alternative that you could use for switching countermeasures, for example. The way you turn that feature on and off, when you, when you clear this out, the way you blank out one of these fields is you click on it and then you right click where the key, map, key bind is. So if we set this to be a button 1. It now says button one, double tap. 
if I right click to clear it out, it still says double tap. So you hit the Y key. Y is in Yankee and it should turn off the double tap. Starting at the top here, our buttons for our hands-on controls. And keep in mind, anything that we don't have in this key map, guys, you can map these to the base buttons on the joysticks, or you can just use your keyboard if your keyboard's where you can reach it, etc. Right? The look behind is going to be a very, very important function, uh, especially when you're flying dual stick. You're going to find yourself flying backwards a lot if you're uh, executing advanced maneuvers, etc. So that's one that you need. So that is the last one in the look uh, category here, in the top category. So go ahead and double click look behind and we are binding that to the bottom button on the right hand stick or you might want to consider it the, the rearmost button on the top of the right hand stick is look behind. Movement, we have all of our axes theoretically already bound there from the previous guide. So the things in this category uh, that we may need to change here are going to be your functions for your IFCS. The IFCS mode for when you are in the persistent universe or baby persistent universe to switch you between your slow precision speed mode, your SCM, space combat maneuvering mode, or your cruise mode where you have a real high top speed. So we're going to need to bind that and G safe to buttons. So let's go ahead and find G force safety toggle. Go ahead and double click that one. Go ahead and hold down the bottom rear button on top of the left stick, which is your shift button, and then tap the left side button on top of your right hand stick, and that should bind your G force safety toggle. IFCS mode shift is going to be the next one, so double click that. So to bind, the IFCS mode shift. You're actually going to take your thumb and hopefully your thumb is big enough for this. We're going to have you push down with kind of the base of your thumb on the shift button and also with the more the tip of your thumb hit the uh, right side button on top of the left hand joystick. So it's the same finger hitting both of those buttons. That's the only shift function that we're binding to the left hand right now because your thumb is occupied with holding down the shift button so you can't operate other buttons uh, very well if at all in that case. Okay also in the moving controls we have your boost and your afterburner so again you're going to go ahead and double click on boost and I want you to hit that left hand button on top of the right joystick afterburner double click on that and hit the right hand button on top of the left stick. Those are the easiest buttons to hit and boost and uh, afterburner are two things that you will be using very extensively. So I put them where they're nice and easy to reach without really throwing off your ability to aim and maneuver. All right, targeting functions. These are very important. First thing in this category that you may want to bind. For now, the look ahead mode defaults on every time that you start the game client. So if you want to bind your look ahead mode, uh, where I set that is on the same button as the rear view, so go ahead and double click on that. Hold your shift button down on the left hand joystick and hit the bottom rear button on the right hand joystick. Gimbal lock I haven't bound here in this key map, but that's something that you may want to bind if it's something that you use. You might want to find a place to bind that. Reticle focus, I don't think it's used all that much by most people, but it is one of my very favorite functions. What this does is it's one of your targeting functions and it will target the ship that is closest to your crosshair. So this is one of the, the targeting functions that I use the absolute most. We're putting our targeting functions on the directional hat on the left hand joystick. Double click reticle focus and push up on that four way hat on the left stick. Next, you're going to do the nearest hostile target. Double click on that and hit right on that four-way hat. And then cycle hostile targets. Double click on that and hit left on that four-way hat. Lastly, double click on acquire missile lock and pull down on that four-way hat. Weapon groups. For now, we're just going to assume that we're using only two weapon groups. Things might get a little bit more confusing later on if you find yourself in a situation where you require more. Uh, I try to keep myself where I can put all my weapons in just two groups, and for all the ships so far, I think that that works for uh, pretty well. The Delta might be one exception if you're using the rocket pods, but most people aren't. So we're going to assign weapon group 1, double-click on that, and pull the trigger on your left-hand controller. Double-click on weapon group 2, and pull the trigger on your right-hand controller. 
Remember, you can bind more than one weapon group to the same trigger too. So you could bind three and four to one of those two as well as one or two if you want, just in case you're in a ship that uses it and you're, it's okay with you that you'll be firing them all at the same time, whatever ones you uh, assign to the same trigger. All right, and launch missile here, guys. We're going to do that with the left-hand joystick. The left button on top of the left joystick is going to be launch missiles. Double-click there and hit the left button on top of the left joystick. Flight defensive countermeasures, very important, and we talked about these a little bit before. So go ahead and double-click on launch countermeasure and hit the right button on top of the right-hand stick. Then cycle countermeasure ammo. Hold your shift button on the left joystick and again hit the right button on top of the right-hand stick. Shields. Your rebalancing shields, we're going to make the hat on the right-hand stick without using any uh, shift modifier. So double-click on shield, raise level front, and push up on the hat on the right-hand stick. Double-click on shield, raise level back, and click down on the hat on the right-hand stick. Double-click shield, raise level left, and click left on the hat on the right-hand stick. And double-click on shield, raise level right, and push right on the hat on the right hand stick. And shield levels with a uh, four-way hat are very easy to get back to center without having to bind a button to reset the levels, but you can bind one of the buttons on the base of your stick if you like. Flight power. This is going to be our shift functions uh, for the right hand stick. So double click on power preset one and uh, hold your shift button on the left stick and hit left on the four-way hat. Double click power preset two, hold your shift button on the left stick and hit right on the four-way hat on the right stick. Double click power preset three, hold your shift button on the left stick and hold down on the hat on the right hand stick and reset power distribution. Hold down your shift button on the left stick and push up on the hat on the right hand stick. I believe that we are done. That should be everything, if I'm not mistaken. Once again, guys, I'm Trip Rodriguez of twitch.tv slash Trip Rodriguez. Thank you guys for coming in. I hope this guide helped you out. And I will see you in the verse.